How much is a pint of milk? Do you even know the cost of a pint of milk? Um, is she right that you don't know the price of milk? I don't know the price of how much a pint of milk costs. No, so what? Ah, uh, milk. A uniquely mammalian experience. From udders, teats, or for those of us on the cutting edge, from a carton. The stuff is ubiquitous. But knowing about milk, specifically how much it costs, has somehow become an indicator of whether people in some of the world's highest positions can still relate to regular idiots like you and me. How much is a gallon of milk? Literally, no one knows. Who gives a shit? But working out the real price of milk is a lot harder than answering an easy gotcha question. And sure, sometimes it's replaced by bread, eggs, coffee, or even sneakers. Yes. How much do you think this retails for? 100 bucks. 100 bucks. What's the resale on these bad boys? Is it 1500? 1500. 1500. But just like listing Sean Penn's best performances, milk remains the go to. Probably because in most countries, milk has come to represent health, tradition, simplicity, and wholesome ambition. Because what's more ambitious than attempting to drink a gallon of milk in under an hour without throwing up? Today, we are gonna do the gallon milk challenge. I'm about to chug this gallon of milk. Two, one. <laughs> but long before intentionally making yourself sick from milk was the cool thing to do, people were doing it all the time without planning it. Nancy Hanks Lincoln, better known as Abraham Lincoln's mother, died in 1818 of milk sickness, a disease caused not by trying to jug a gallon of milk as quickly as possible, but rather by drinking milk from cows that ate white snake root. In 1850s New York City, thousands of children were poisoned and died after drinking swill milk, milk made by sickened cows that was tainted and off color, a problem unscrupulous producers attempted to conceal by mixing in chalk, flour, and plaster. Eventually, things like refrigeration, health standards, and hygienic processes such as pasteurization made it so milk was safer to transport from rural areas to cities. Milk's reputation also got a boost from the cool kids of the anti-alcohol temperance movements of the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Prohibitionists pushed dairy-based products as an alternative to spirits. Pounding milk with the boys wouldn't get you tipsy, yet still offered a decent shot at a devastating stomach ache. What girl's gonna go for me with a body like this? Hang in there, Tom. I'm you two years from now, because you're drinking milk and working out. But no one was more enthusiastic about pushing milk's healthy, wholesome image than milk producers themselves. Hi, Tom. I'm waiting. Milk, it does a body good. Creating some of the late 20th century's most iconic advertising campaigns. Who among us can forget the classic line, do you have any milk? Got milk, got milk. Got milk. Huh. Guess I forgot the classic line. While some campaigning politicians might just turn to using flashcards to remember the price of milk. Price of a gallon of milk just went over $4 a gallon. The countries they're hoping to lead are often the ones controlling the price. The US and the EU keep milk prices from falling too low by buying up the excess in times of low demand. Something that's become known in Europe as Butter Mountain or Milk Lake. But for some reason, never Cow Juice Canyon. These countries also keep the cost from going too high with a variety of subsidies. Every year, the US government spends billions of dollars to support American farms, and those subsidies are paid with taxpayer money, meaning consumers have already put a down payment on their milk before they even get to the checkout. At a rough estimate, if American consumers were to pay the cost of subsidies at the register, milk would cost them as much as $6 per gallon. But there are a lot of factors, including trade policy and industry regulation, not to mention a volatile market, which means the true price of milk is always shifting. And these subsidies are often captured by large agribusinesses and wealthy investors long before they get to family-run operations. The situation isn't that different in the EU, which distributes around $65 billion to farmers every year. We, the small farmers, get 20% of EU money. 80% goes to big agricultural groups. Industrial mega dairies are also able to operate more cost-effectively than small dairy farms, flooding markets with cheap milk and lowering prices paid to farmers. That's why for the last few decades, many family farms have been forced to shut down. There's another big hidden cost to milk, the industry's environmental impact. Today's giant mega dairies aren't raising bucolic herds grazing lazily in fields. They pack as many animals as possible into tight spaces. Just their farts and burps combine to be some of the world's biggest emitters of methane 
which warms the climate about 28 times quicker than carbon dioxide. Their manure creates more methane, in addition to nitrous oxide, which is up to 298 times stronger a pollutant than CO2. Factory farms' ever-flowing tidal wave of poop can also leak into rivers and taint drinking water. In 2017, dairy industry pollution left more than half of New Zealand's waterways unusable for drinking or swimming. While milk consumption in much of the world is on the rise, some of the countries pumping out the most milk are headed in the opposite direction. Now, milk also has some competition. Non-dairy milks made from soy, oats, almonds and rice are picking up a growing piece of the market. And the FDA and dairy farmers are fighting back by arguing about what these alternatives can even be called. Surely someone out there has a sexy way of explaining what makes milk, milk. The federal definition of milk is the lacteal secretion, practically free from colostrum, obtained by the complete milking of one or more healthy cows. Perhaps asking politicians the price of milk is a cheap shot that satisfies our anti-elitist itch, sure, but doesn't really indicate anything of substance about the people in power. But seeing as the question probably isn't going away anytime soon, my advice to any aspiring politicians is to get yourself some consultants who have some real-world milk experience. 